So I think it may be interesting to tell you about my approach to portraiture, which is a little bit different to what normally people expect. I tend to use people, faces or body, to use them as a tool, only part of the, of the image. It's an excuse to create an image by the using backgrounds, carefully chosen backgrounds and often foregrounds as well, in order to create interestingly composed image. And the person is only um, one of the numerous elements uh, being part of the picture. Uh, well, they do have a brief. I tell them exactly what to do. Uh, so that they occupy the, the exact part of the, of the frame, the way I want them to, to be related to the rest of the image. But they don't have to perform, this is what I mean, and uh, they feel relaxed. And often viewers of these pictures say, your, your sitters look good and they look very relaxed, how do you do that? Well, this is the reason why there's no, no pressure on them. They don't wear any makeup. What they're wearing, though, is carefully chosen to match the, the rest of the scene. But uh, they are not people who are necessarily more beautiful in the first place than anybody else. Although viewers say, well, they look really beautiful. It's the composition they are part of which is beautiful. Some backgrounds are attractive, but they are not really... Um, uh, they don't lend themselves that well to integrate the, the person in it. Uh, it's a bit like uh, making an abstract composition uh, without a person in it and see the, the beauty, but then when you add the person in it, it reshuffles the cards completely. Mm -hmm. So the exercise is even more difficult because it's not only about seeing something attractive in a, in a, in a composed way, in, in, in what's available wherever you are, it's, it's seeing something which will be able to welcome the person in it and still work with the person. Well, the person adds to it and it adds to the person. And uh, it's an exercise which is, requires quite a bit of experience. It's only when I was 18 that I got a chance to use a, um, a dark room. So it was great to make these photos appear out of nowhere. I had very little experience about taking proper photographs. And in those days I was using black and white film photography, of course, because I'm 63. So <laughs> until I found out about medium format cameras. So it forces you to work slowly and to give you time to, uh, to create um, compositions. I learned a lot by slowing down that way. And I remember once uh, going all the way to London to um, show some, uh, some examples to a lady who was um, a big, big photographer. And uh, I was quite confident she would lie them. <laughs> and she said, you should be paying much more attention to your backgrounds, to where you shoot your people. And that, these words had a tremendous impact on me. And that's how I first considered in a more conscious way the, the background. And then I did foregrounds and so on and play with that and it's become along the years my my uh, niche, my my mark. Usually people say I can recognize a, a picture made by you, taken by you amongst thousands uh, other pictures of other people because they have this particular approach where I guess geometry is omnipresent, there's a lot about geometry.
yeah, it's all, I said, all about composition. It's all about what you see in the viewfinder and nothing else. Yeah. I, 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 I love people. Um, I, I teach people, I photograph people, I, I speak with people. As I said, the, the, the choice of using people um, is not innocent because I have a strong interest in people. And um, uh, in my 20s, I was a nurse. Uh, I trained as a nurse and worked until I was 31. That was in France, um, in uh, Dijon Hospital in Burgundy. But my uh, English wife, I was already living with in France, was offered a job here in Strad in England. So that was a perfect opportunity for me to teach French to foreigners, but not, not in France. Uh, so I so started. That's, that's how you moved to Strasbourg. That's right, 32 years ago. Photography uh, has always been a very strong interest and uh, never stopped doing any photography. And at some stage, I uh, decided to give it a good go, professional, professionally speaking. And that took me to places uh, like Hong Kong and Singapore where there's a lot of um, uh, expats um, in the culture of hiring photographers. So I spent, I used to go twice a year for a month in, in Hong Kong for five or six years. Also, I wanted to do something substantial, I wanted to have an exhibition in New York and which I did. I went there for three years, 2011, 12 and 13. And there was an exhibition and this picture is one of them. 52 New York based contemporary dance dancers and choreographers. One of my nephews used to be in a principal dancer at Martha Graham Dance Company in New York. And that was at a time when my son, uh, Paul, was uh, developing a very, very strong interest in becoming a dancer. And um, he was then 16 when I was going uh, on a regular basis to New York to get this exhibition done. I took him with me and um, he was able to uh, to do a, a workshop in the Martha Graham Dance School. Um, he felt like a grown-up because uh, morning I would go my way to shoot uh, dancers and he would go his own way and... and yeah, exactly, and dance. This is a, a good example to illustrate my approach, which I call peoplescape. Uh, that shape is it's mimicking the, that part of the instrument um, in terms of color, in terms of shape, and even in terms of patterns. But here, it's, obviously, it's a reflection. And it suggests, although it doesn't show, but it's a round shape, it suggests that, that round shape and this as well. And it's now, these two are now uh, contrasting in terms of um, color with the hat, but echoing in terms of shape, uh, because it's a round shape, is a, the, the third one. The whole image is, um, involves a series of echoings and contrasting. Um, like in food, you know, the soft and the crunchy, the salty and the sweet. So you see how this vertical line uh, follows that, that round shape and goes through the arm and comes out and comes up here and talks, this talks with this. And it even goes that way and that bit is the same, same length of, as that bit. And, and that round shape com is the extension of that round shape. Um, 
yeah harmony is a key word because uh it 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 it's about linking the all the all the various parts of the of the picture in a, in a working visual way and um, so none of my pictures can be uh, printed uh, on on a canvas for obvious reasons because i i make uh, very tight compositions well, this is a good example the edge uh, of the composition is just right at the at the end of of the circle same with the two parallel um, blue lines uh, if we if we crop this it's not going to work so it's about duality two 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 and talking again about correspondences uh, the purple one echoes with the obviously with the t-shirt and the blue echo echoes echoes with the blue dress and uh, it's two and two well here it was a little bit different that guy just turned up in the car park and uh, as i said when i he took the helmet off I was amazed by his tattoos and asked him if I could photograph him. He said, no, that's fine. Um, that's a tank and only, only taking a small part of it to make it as a triangle, which, which um, corresponds to that triangle. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it, it, it echoes in color, but it contrasts inside and it's, it's inverted. The small size is there and this, this correspondence there and this is parallel to this and there's a kind of suggested um, movement you know uh, which brings the the aliveness the dynamics of the picture suggesting possibilities of movement and it's all monochromatic and except for a little splash of color So this was in Paris and uh, I was just walking in, in the streets and thought that this place was, uh, could have been a good place to photograph somebody. And it didn't take more than 10 minutes for this person to pass by and uh, she was wearing the right colors, obviously, the, the stripes and, and, and everything. The background by itself could be interesting in itself but it's not enough and the person by themselves is is good enough but the two together uh, create that extra special thing composition which which can um, um, transcends the the beauty of the person or the beauty of the place it's meeting the meeting of a person and a place it's magical uh, you you just have a uh, some degree of a feeling that that there's potential for it to work and and you try it and it does work immediately there's something something a bit spiritual about it and it's not a, a portrait it's it's um it's an image involving a person that's why you don't call it that's right, I call it people scape. <laughs>